this is an It Came From Gen X video. But we'll certainly start off with uh, with music. And of course, the big story is the 2022 uh, Music Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee ceremony. Took in place. Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Not in Cleveland. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, Los Angeles, the home of whatever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just no respect at all, man, I tell you. But, the home of uh, most of those people, probably, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Um, but interesting, the uh, <clears throat> the inductee list, I thought, was a little more, um, you know, wasn't so reclusive, you know. I, I thought that they are they're starting to do a better job. At, at this point in time, it doesn't matter anymore. It's just too late to fix this mess, so it is what it is. But I definitely want to talk about some of the uh, the inductees. Um, there's some like about times, and there's some mm-hmm. what. Um, I thought it'd be cool to just shoot down that list real quick, guys, and talk about them. First name on the top of that list to me is uh, certainly a uh, about time. And that is the great Pat Benatar and Neil Gerardo. Yeah. Um, to me, one of the greatest yeah. vocalists and one of the greatest mm. guitar players, songwriters in rock history. Sure. Uh, just feel good music. Some of my favorite songs, period, are a couple of Pat Benatar songs. Uh, Promises in the Dark and uh, Hell is for Children. Um, and that title could be misleading if you don't really know what she's talking about which is a song about child abuse so uh i just think they're fantastic and i am glad to see them get honored finally thoughts on pat benatar uh skimbo i I mean with you as soon as they finally said pat benatar so what the hell did it take so long (laughs) she should have been in years ago uh She's, uh, when you think about us and rock and roll in the 80s, uh, early 80s, uh, she's one of the first ones that come to mind, um, you know. So I'm very, very happy for her. And, you know, for the rock call, like you said, it's a mess. It's about damn time to get their heads out of their yeah. butts and uh, get her in. Yeah. Now, um, Fisher made an interesting comment off the air when we were talking about this, and he was basically saying how a lot of these come from our mtv era you mm-hmm. know which is kind of yeah. cool but man how does a person who was like what the second video ever played on mtv That's just right. now get in in 2022 <laughs> i don't understand that you know it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me and it wasn't like she was like like the like the uh you know bugles who were like one song you never heard from them again this woman mm-hmm. went on to an incredible career her and neil gerardo so yeah just crazy mm-hmm. any thoughts on the real quick fish yeah, it's a huge talent. Like you say, just both of them are terrific. I've seen them uh, live years ago. Great show at Blossom. Man, I was I've never seen them. Dang. Yeah, just just again, great vocal. And she was a huge influence. I mean, she definitely yeah. helped pave the way for other female rock uh, stars in her generation, yeah. uh, for sure. You know, and her fashion was also influential yeah. oh, as my well gosh, with the yeah. haircut and Big everything else. So. Uh huh. Yep. And of course, uh, her yep. her style was was highlighted. In a movie we grew up with, Fast Times at Richmond High. Yes. Um, and they specifically said so, oh, yeah. Pat Benatar, yeah. the Pat Benatar crowd. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, not a voice like her, still isn't, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. close, but never a voice like her. All right. Uh, Duran Duran, staying with the MTV video era. Uh, if there yep. was ever a band who ruled the MTV era, Duran Duran certainly had their hand in there well, with hit after hit after hit. I love Duran Duran growing up. Um, I thought they were as unique as it got. They were, you know, uh, a little bit of funk, a little bit of rock, a little bit of soul, a little bit of all sorts of stuff. Um, really, really happy for them. Thoughts on them, Fish? Uh, musically, some of the best talent in any band that ever existed. Some mm-hmm. of the best. Yeah, just, all those guys could all play their instruments mm-hmm. at a high level. Simon LeBond's voice is great. Yeah. Again, I first saw them like, you know, who are these pretty boys and all that, but I instantly like these guys are cool. They sound cool, yeah. they look cool. Uh I've always liked Duran Durant. So uh and obviously the videos were great, but yeah, just just huge a huge talent. Well, and one of the great one of the great James Bond theme songs of all time too. Uh one, one of the best my, my favorite. Yeah, my without absolute question. favorite. Yep, definitely Beautiful kill. up there mm-hmm. with mine with a couple of them. Thoughts on them, Skinner. 
you know, <clears throat> back when they were uh, huge, they were kind of a guilty pleasure because nobody thought of me as, you know, the the rocker. Mm-hmm. How are you liking Duran Duran? Uh, but those guys, like Fisher said, they could, they were top notch musicians. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, you know, nowadays I just go back and revisit their music and I'm like, now I see why I liked them so much when I was a kid because these guys really had something special yeah. going on. So very happy for them. And just like we said with Pat Benatar, what the hell did it take so long for them so, to get in? So they thought of you were the rocker, huh? They thought you were tough. I don't say about tough, but they all knew it, that I listened to music that was a hell of a lot harder than Duran Duran. Okay, I, w- so. I was just checking because I was going to remind you, you were getting up going bowling on Saturday. Nobody thought you were t- <laughs> 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 I just, I just wanted to remind that you. That is true. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, this next was really interesting. Um Because when you think of the longevity of, a, of a Duran Duran and, and a Pat Benatar, wow, when you they say the name Eminem. It feels like, man, I remember when he came on the scene. It's been a long time, but certainly when he comes to albums and the numbers to qualify and what he has done, man, just a unbelievable career already. You happy you seen his name on this list, Skinner? I am. And to be truthful, I didn't know Eminem until I saw the movie Eight Mile. Okay. I didn't know. I mean, I knew he had music on the radio, but I wasn't, that wasn't my genre of music. Um, I watched State Mile on a recommendation and I got to, to learn who Eminem was. And I really became a fan, not only of the artist, but the man himself. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I'm really happy as well for him. Uh, skill wise, man, he is, uh, there are, there are just a few out there that I think can even be in his category. Some of the ones that I've seen that are as phenomenal as he is, their names are not as well known. They they got the skill, but not the songs or the push, if if you will. Mm-hmm. And I've I've heard a few, uh, but there are a few that do have a good name, um, a well known name that are unbelievably uh, skillful. Uh, Buster Rhymes comes to mind. Uh, Buster is ridiculous okay. what he can do. With, with his mouth, but uh, I think Eminem is on a level of like of a Dave Chappelle, where he has just reached the pinnacle of his craft, and he's just kind of all alone in his own category. Thoughts real quick, Fish? I can't say much more than that. Just a, a force in the industry, like I said. Uh, so, yeah. And of course, um, we, we don't want to miss the, the, ma- the elephant in the room here, you know. Here's this white guy came in to a predominantly yeah. black genre, if you will, and boom, took over. Yeah, and, and, you know, took over. A lot of knock, people didn't like that. Yeah, off. and uh, I, I thought it was great um, at the time that his first uh, album went great. I, you know, I remember uh, uh, the great comment by Charles Barkley. He goes, "You know, I, I know the world's coming coming to an end. You know, this was when Tiger Woods was was starting to rule. He goes, when the world's greatest rapper is white and the world's greatest golfer is black." <laughs> <laughs> so, so funny. yeah, uh, yeah. I am. I'm, I personally am grateful for Eminem um, as a person with my background, uh, you know, in, in rock and whatever. Just to break down these color barriers and stop all the stupid stuff. I'm all for cultural history. I have no problem with that. But I think we're it's time to break down these barriers, man, and get past skin color and just just move on. So I, I, I mm-hmm. personally. I'm grateful for Eminem. All right, stand with that video thing, our our MTV thing, your rhythmics, video yeah. gods, on, you know, on MTV, man. Jeez, in the early '80s, they just they just had the formula for the videos, and of course, Annie Lennox, another phenomenal vocalist. Can't believe yeah. they're just now getting in fish. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. It's just, I again, it's one of the best female vocalists you're ever going to hear, and just a unique sound they, totally had. Unique. they, had, they yeah. definitely had their own thing so so good so i'm happy to, that they got in okay moving a little bit quicker uh skinner the great dolly parton uh who had declined at first mm-hmm. to be part of it she and did. i'm glad she didn't uh kind of respected where she was coming from but i'm glad she didn't this to me is like the biggest travesty of all uh, dolly parton are you serious the woman has her own theme park <laughs> you're huge <laughs> yeah. you're huge when you get your own theme park dolly parton 2022 this is shameful man i don't i don't know what they're doing how is she just now getting in skinner 
I don't know because she's on the Mount Rushmore of country music with George Jones and, and Johnny Cash and <laughs> Waylon Jennings. So I, I don't know why uh, it's taken this long, whether it's because country music has their own, you know, I, I don't know. There's no explanation yeah. why the great well, Dolly Parton at, uh, is just now getting in. Right. Well, we're going by the track record of the, of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the artists that they put in. We know we're well beyond rock and roll, per se, mm -hmm. as a genre. Yeah. So according to their own track mm -hmm. record, this woman should have been in 15, 20 years ago, if you, if yeah. you ask me. So I, I don't know oh, that part. Okay, uh, another one, in my opinion, on that list, Lionel Richie. Yeah. There was a stretch when no one was having more hits than Lionel Richie, man. Yeah, I'm talking right. number ones, boom after another. Song oh, that yeah. they come on and mm -hmm. everybody sings. You know what I'm saying? And you're talking about a two-artist career. This guy yeah. made multi-platinum with the Commodores and as a solo artist. Sure. Right, just now getting in. Uh, it's it's songwriting as well, Keith. He just wrote many yeah. hits, you know, for you know Kenny Rogers and others. I mean, just a Absolutely. huge talent. Yeah, right. Yeah. And those were mm -hmm. huge hits too. Yeah. Um, speaking of songwriters, Carly Simon. I might not be the biggest fan. She might not be total relevant today, but as far as songwriting and stuff for other people, I don't get it. So those are just some under the uh, performer category. Now, under the Music Excellence Award, this one, of course, a little closer and dear to our heart, guys. Um, there are certain bands in the metal world that are in a kind of a different stratosphere. They travel different. Their shows look different. Um, there might, they might be on our Mount Rushmore, if you will. Mm. Excuse me. One of those bands, of course, is uh, Judas Priest, who started in the 70s. Yeah. Mm hmm they got more albums that I don't I can't remember how many albums they got um, and what this band has done over the years. Of course, our dear friend and, and schoolmate, uh, Tim Ripper Owens, his dream came true being a part of this band. Um, mm -hmm. With what they've done and still doing it, if anybody in heavy metal should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they should have been the first one off the list in my opinion, as far as not being in there already. I don't understand this one at all, Fisher. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Just top to bottom, like you say, just a great music, also great songwriting, many, many hits, and in my book, Rob Halford, one of the best hard rock metal singers, period. He's on the Mount Rushmore of yeah. oh, hard rock question. metal singers. No question it, about it. He has the nickname, The Metal God. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. no, no for one, a yeah, for a reason, no one's came close mm -hmm. to what he's doing, uh, you know, save a Jeff Tate or whatever. And this is one of the few bands that still can travel around the world and fill arenas True. still to this day, you know, even with the lineup changes and all the different things they've had going on. Um, I just don't get it. And I would like to get uh, an answer from someone on why it took so long to get Judas Priest and Skitter. What do you think, man? Well, you know, this seems to be the theme. Every time you bring up an artist, it's why is it taking so long? So I'm going to call this the makeup year for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're doing the makeup uh, good, good, for good all call. the wrongdoing that they've done over the years. You know what? Um, That's awesome. We were just, it's was, it was funny you, were, you, you mentioned Judas Priest because we were. We were talking before you came even on uh, that uh, Fish is going to go to the uh, venue that he's going to on Saturday. I haven't stepped foot in it. It's the Cleveland Agora. I can mm -hmm. say it on air. I haven't been there since we saw Tim Ripper Owens uh, as lead mm -hmm. uh, for Judas Priest. That's the last time I stepped foot in that venue, and that was tw about 20-some years ago. So, um, yeah, it <laughs> I don't want to beat a dead bush, but what the hell did it take us so long for them to get in? I don't know, Skinner, but you were reading my mind. Great call when you said the makeup year, because as I was looking at this list, I was like seeing the theme here of people who should have been in here, um, and that's crazy. Next on the Music's Excellence Award, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. You are talking about icons yeah. in the hip-hop world. I mm -hmm. mean, man, when hip-hop just started becoming huge, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis were there. You know, you got the time, 
Um, they put Janet Jackson on the map, took her solo yeah. career, and went skyrocketing with it. And the list goes on and on. They they're under the Music's Excellence Award, but they could have been under a couple of different categories. I don't know why sure. they're just now getting on here. So uh, that that's crazy. Um, then you got the Influence Award. Uh, seriously, Harry Belafonte, I, I, I stop. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Harry <laughs> Belafonte. Okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> Um, that's silly. Uh, I'm not sure about who Elizabeth Cotton is, uh, or Cotton, so I'm not going to comment on that. You guys know who that is? Not familiar. I don't recognize that name. Okay, so, uh, and then the other names, um, I don't recognize is the Ahmed at Gruton Award. I don't know if that's, uh, that's a diverse group, uh, award. But man, just some incredible, incredible names that are like, <laughs> leave you like this that should have been on that list um but i'm glad to see those people get in they need to have that title in front of them. rock and roll hall of famers judas priest mm -hmm. like, yeah okay yes very 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 cool so um by the way i just i just saw it online tonight go check out janet jackson attended the ceremony tonight to support her friends oh okay. and she recreated the control look in honor of them getting in so she had the hair oh. and everything she posed with oh, them jimmy and everything jam and terry so, lewis? yeah jimmy jam terry lewis yeah oh, okay. so that's great yeah yeah they were such uh instrumental figures in her career she was coming off a very uh abusive divorce she was overweight uh lost a lot of confidence and they just totally rebuilt her um mm -hmm. as an artist and as a person and gave her the confidence and help her get control of her own life, which is why the first the album was called Control, and the first single was called Control. Um, hmm. So that was all of them. They produced every song on that album, and um, th did a lot for her. So that's probably why she gave them such respect. So yeah, very cool. So yeah, those, those they, these people need to have that title in front of their name. You know, when when me and my uncle, uh, the great Sam Moore, aren't fighting, I love to give him that respect. You know, let him remind him he's a Hall of Famer when he's when something comes up and he's like, well, I didn't want to shake any trees. I was going to do your rock and roll hall of famer. That counts for something. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You, know, you, you, you speak up, you know, when it comes to, you know, something about music or whatever, he's always being passive. I'm like, forget that crap. You paid your dues, man. All right, guys. Uh, and hey, by the way, just off the tails of that, I'm so sorry. So just a, a you know, just an announcement. We'll talk more about this here, but this podcast has been nominated for, top podcast to come out of Kenmore, Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's in the, in the Kenmore, Ohio podcast, uh, hall of fame. So, right. Read, read uh, the other nominees. Uh, uh, I got the list here somewhere. I think it's uh, convincing idiots, uh, us, uh, probably some community thing, something like that. So yeah, stay tuned. So we hope, we hope to get in. <laughs> Hey, Fish here from It Came From Gen X with Skinner and Keith. For every like and subscribe, you may win a free one-year subscription to the AARP.